I am speaking to Adam Wiggins, CTO and co-founder of Heroku. And uh, Adam, in your presentation, you were talking about, uh, well, the importance of hackability in the post-PC world. And uh, there was a little bit of a uh, tinge you were talk thinking that hackability may be under threat because uh, a lot of systems are starting to get locked down. I mean, do you believe it's under threat? Sure. Well, these modern computing platforms, both on the client side, you know, mobile devices, for example, and server side, things like infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, come with a lot more structure. And with that structure comes restrictions. And I think that's mostly a good thing. But many people have called out the fact that those restrictions may impact the ability for new people to get into development or our ability to hack these devices and these platforms at their deepest level. Um, so my personal feeling is that hackability is really important for empowerment, freedom, and uh, as we increasingly live in a world that is made of computers, hackability of com computing is crucial. Um, so I think we need to turn our heads to how we make sure that these new platforms are just as hackable as the general purpose computing platforms that they're replacing. And it, I agree that it's important because, you know, if I'm going to be able to control and make, you know, make a combination of a different, I guess, uh, databases, I'm going to need access to them. And right now, that's not too possible as people are more protecting their data. I think the key is the right interface, right? And so what you see in general purpose computing, so as an example, like you get a, on the server side, which is what I'm most familiar with, you get a server, you get a shell into that server, and you can basically do anything. Um, and any program you run can basically do anything with some minor restrictions. but. And what that creates is kind of a very messy situation. It's really easy to shoot yourself in the foot. It's easy to mess things up. Yes, it's very modifiable. It's very hackable. But it also makes it uh, so that it's often, you have to be very cautious about modifying systems. And you especially see this as a system becomes more critical in production, the more, you know, oh, God, don't touch it, because you might break it, right? And so I think the restrictions that you get from these platforms are great in the sense that they make them more uh, safe to use, they make them easier and more agile to use, they create structure for working within. Uh, the downside is, okay, these restrictions potentially prevent you from being able to modify it. So I think there is a way we can thread that needle, cut the Gordian knot, pick your metaphor, to make them both highly flexible and modifiable at the deepest level, but get the benefits that you get from these, uh, the res more restricted and structured environment. So one of the models you were saying to look towards is the maker movement and that it's become a very hackable space. Why do you think it's so hackable even though, I, the way I see the maker movement, it's really so hobbyist level that it hasn't gone beyond that where in true hacking that it's gone from hobby to full blown companies. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Well, everything Every new technology and every important social shift starts as, if it's technology, it's considered a toy, right? If it's a social shift, it's considered something that's hobbyist. I think that's where it has to start. It's where it necessarily starts. And in fact, that's what you want. You always want that long tail of hobbyists, that long tail of people that are not doing anything that is very serious and professional. But that creates the ramp for the people that do have the talent and the inclination and the desire to devote their entire careers to a particular field to get into it, right? That's how I got into programming. I started tinkering around with BASIC on a you know com computer at the school, and I was able to get far enough with my programs that 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 led me further down the path. And so I think that's where Maker is right now. It's really, you know, it's just in the last maybe year or two going mainstream. Really fantastic stuff happening there. How many of the people in that movement are going to go on to design, you know, become industrial designers or, uh, you know, structural engineers or other things like that? I don't know the answer to that. Uh, right now, probably very few. I think in the future, it could be a lot more. Last question, and I want to know where you think today's hackers, so people in that room, what specifically they can learn from the maker movement? What is it, I guess, the attitude, the maker movement that the people in that room need to have? Yeah, I think one of the best things about the maker movement is their eye towards what I would call accessibility. I mean that in the sense of being accessible to hobbyists, as we were talking about before, kids in a lot of cases. Um, you know, I learned a program when I was a kid I don't know how easy that is to do today. A kid growing up with, say, an iPad as his primary computing device, 
how easy is it for him to get in and create a program for it? Or his Xbox, how easy is it for him to get in and create a game for it? I was pre playing games on my computer, and it was a natural transition for me to start making games on my computer because you could do that with the general purpose computing platform. Maker Movement is very much about that kind of open arms. Anyone can come in and learn this stuff. Yes, there are specialized skills, but we'll, we'll help you learn, we'll give you the tools, we'll make it safe. It's not something that's elitist. Um, and that's something I think that I would love to see incorporated in the next generation of hackability for computing platforms. Excellent. Adam, thanks so much for your time. Thanks a lot.